Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Foundations of Engineering One class. My name is Jangwon Park. Um, today we have uh, two announcements. The first one is midterm exam number two. So we will have a midterm exam number two on April 12th, Wednesday, during the lab session. It's closed book exam. Bring your calculator. And the covering chapter is from chapter 8.6 to chapter 14. Today in this class we will cover the chapter 12 mathematical models and the next Monday we will cover uh, chapter 14 elementary statistics. The midterm exam will take uh, around one hour and the, the portion is 15% of your total grade. The second announcement is we will have uh, another faculty in Foundations of Engineering 1 class, uh, Dr. Maudio Hariri. Uh, he is a system professor, professional assistant professor in our department. Uh, he will make a short presentation about digital human modeling. Well, this is a very interesting topic to me. Uh, I'm also um, looking forward to seeing his presentations. and. Uh, the coming, uh, the next Monday, next, uh, let me see. So next Monday we will have a Dr. Hariri, and then on Wednesday uh, we will have a Ruby, Dr. Ruby Meruberogul. Um, sorry, my pronunciation is not correct. Um, we will have a Ruby. Uh, she will make a presentation. Uh, about applications of image processing in science and engineering. This is also a very interesting topic to me. So we will have uh, two more uh, engineering faculty in our classes on next week. So let's go to the chapter 12 mathematical models. Today we will cover first know what is mathematical model modeling okay. and understand the concepts of interpolation and extrapolation. Okay, that's the thing. And the last one is understand linear model. Okay, let's go. Um, before we talk about the mathematical models, um, let me see some, uh, let's see some data here. This is a population in Corpus Christi, Texas. So as you can see, the population in 1860 was pretty low, and right now it's around uh, 300,000, more than 300,000. So you can see, as time goes by, the population was increased, right? Um, some year, like uh, 1930, uh, there, there was a huge increment. Uh, maybe there should be some event like uh, oil industry goes well, or some other issues. So that's why the Corpus Christi population is dramatically increased in this area. But um, in this chapter, we want to look at the mathematical models, right? So I want to see more detail about how we can use this data to predict or estimate the population of Corpus Christi in 2030. Okay, right. Uh, this year is 2017, but can we estimate the population in 2013 in Corpus Christi, Texas? How can we do that? Probably it's more than 300,000 because it's a still increasing pattern. then how we have to build a mathematical model. What is model? So simply say the model is abstract descriptions. Okay? What is the, the model? These are models. Hmm. But in this class we are going to more focus on some science and engineering uh, point of view. So math and science engineering, the mathematical model is um, um, equations. Sometimes uh, 
um, it can be a statistical models, economic models. The image on the right hand shows that um, this is uh, my favorite movie, Social Network. Um, the main character, he wrote uh, some equations on the window. This is my favorite scene in the movie. Um, and based on this equation, they uh, build some computer programming algorithm uh, which is a match, uh, match the face to face, things like that. Mm. So, mathematical uh, algorithm is very important in uh, computer programming. Um, then, what is mathematical modeling? Is um, so it should be some mathematical structures. Okay, it should have a mathematical structures. But not just a number, it can be a uh, graph or equation, diagram, scatter plot. Those are all, all mathematical models. Let's look at the Newton's second law. So this is the Newton. Newton's second law is um, force equals mass times accelerations. Okay, this is the equation, right? And this is mathematical formula. The question is how to build this kind of mathematical formula. Okay, so f it, it says uh, force is uh, mass times accelerations. So how to build this kind of uh, formula? Okay, we need a uh, data. Okay, this slide shows the uh, three data points: 0 0.0, 1 0.1, 4.4. We want to build a uh, model, mathematical model, that passes through all three points, okay? So how to find A and B of this model? So A is a um, uh, slope, right? So how to find the slope? Slope, we have to find run and rise, okay? So 3 divided by 3 is a uh, slope, so A is equal to 1, and B is equal to 0, because uh, when X equals 0, then the Y should be 0. So that's why the B is 0. It's a very simple model. Okay. But there are some very difficult model. Uh, even there is no... Uh, solutions okay so this is the digital human modeling you can see human body linkage system is very complex uh, um, this human mother want to reach the ball on the ground or on the um, so somewhere um, this human mother reach with uh, his uh, left hand and then the other joint locations or uh, joint angles were calculated based on the movement of the uh, left hand and the left hand movement was uh, calculated based on the location of a ball. Okay, so we call this is inverse kinematics algorithm. Uh, sometimes, not sometimes, in most of case inverse kinematics algorithm have a uh, uh, multiple different uh, solutions. Uh, we call it um, infinite solutions. So there are so many solutions. You can reach the ball uh, in different postures. Right? There should be number of postures. So it's infinite solutions. All right. Uh, let's go back to the um, why mathematical model is important um, in rocket science how to send a spaceship to the moon. Uh, you have to calculate um, the tra trajectory of the uh, uh, spaceship and also you need to con consider the environment environmental factors. Um, so such as you have to avoid some satellite on the space to reach the moon. 
but also uh, other some stones around the, uh, in the space. The mathematical model can precisely predict the um, speed and uh, trajectory of the spaceships. So it's very important. Not just the spaceship, you can apply this mathematical model to almost everywhere. This is a very useful tool to understand the system and identify the relationship between the variables. This is important. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, the Google recently developed the AlphaGo, um, some deep learning, uh, deep deep learning based uh, artificial intelligence system. So. Um, I think it was uh, two, uh, two years ago, at that time, the Sedor Lee, uh, he was a champion in the world about this uh, uh, game named uh, Go. Okay. Um, when um, people expect that the AlphaGo will, uh, should be, uh, could be rules the games because this game has uh, so many number of cases so that it's harder to, um, even though the computer power is great and the computing process is uh, pretty decent, but it's too hard to uh, win the human in this kind of a huge number of case games. But the result says the AlphaGo wins. Uh, AlphaGo wins four games and uh, the human wins one game. And this is a short video also compare um, the human versus machines, the computer vision technology, mathematical models, inverse kinematics algorithm are involved. Let's see a short video. Sorry about that. Um, the result shows uh, a man lose the game because uh, uh, this machine uh, can hit the, uh, the ball very accurately and very precisely. So now we are living in digital world. Um, I'm a little worried about that. Um, if um, there is a teaching machine or some um, professor machine comes up and uh, he can uh, the machine can replace my positions uh, sooner or later uh, it's possible because uh, uh, technology has been developed so fastly so there should be some uh, artificial artificial intelligence system uh, teachers will be come out and um, it can teach you uh, instead of uh, the actual humans, like me. Okay, this is uh, another example. You probably remember these figures. So um, this blue line is a revenue line, and the green one is process B, and the red one is a process A. So break-even point, uh, we can find the break-even point uh, using this visual information. So just uh, find the graph, and uh, we can see for process B, we can find uh, the process. Uh, the break-even point is uh, looks like a four thousand five hundred. Let's assume that, okay? But we can calculate it uh, using mathematical models. So let's say the x-axis shows uh, the vehicle sold and the y-axis shows cost and revenue here. So we can make a mathematical models using some uh, informations on this line and we can draw we can uh, form these equations and if we want to find the uh, um, break even point for process B uh, sorry about that this is uh, process B it's not A okay so we just to uh, 
put some equal so 18,000 x equals these equations then we have a unknown variable x then we have two equations so we can find it x equals 4,300 beakers okay, it's easy so what I wanted to say here we can estimate based on the visual information but it must be a um, guess right we can assume okay this line it seems like half of the here so um, it looks like 4,500 but if you use the mathematical model you can find uh, more accurate answers that's the difference there are three types of models so linear model y equal ax plus b form okay and the power <coughs> is y equal ax n is in the superscript position okay exponential here we have x is in the superscript positions so in exponential function the value the x element is increased then the y value increased dramatically so we said exponentially increased power function is also similar um, but here you can see y equal ax n n to the to the power if n is odd number the graph looks like this and if n is even number then graph looks like this okay and uh, you have to understand this concept the x is always indicate independent variable y indicates dependent variable so today we will have to look at the linear model the linear model this is very simple linear models and this is the direct showing the direct relationship between x and y there's, there is a coefficient a and the intercept b. So let's look at the terminology first. So y is, as I said, this is dependent variable, and x is independent variable. So abscis are an ordinate. Okay, abscis are ordinate. A is a slope, b is intercept. Okay, and there is only one variable, that is x, only one variable. So this is a single variable model. And this is a multiple variable model, so y equal ax1 plus bx2 plus dot 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 c. So this is a multiple variable models. Uh, you probably remember this figure as the last lab. Uh, this is a female scatter plot and the male scatter plot. We want to add a trend line for each data set. So let's see how we can do in Excel. So you can just uh, click the data set. Uh, let's do the female first and click the right button. There is add trend line. Okay. Click the add trend line. Uh, it's, uh, it may be harder to see. Uh, there is a line. Uh, let's change some color here. I want to change black so you can see the line just the thickness okay that is for linear trend line for female and this is for male okay so now we have a two trend line each line indicates um, there are positive correlation between weight and the statures Okay, when weight is increasing, then stature is also increasing. It's a simple pattern. Um, then how can we calculate the slope and the intercept of this model? That's the question. Before we go, let me ask you a question. Which one is the best linear model to fit this nine data point set? Okay. So this is model A, this is model B, Mother C and Mother D. 
which one is the best model in this case? Uh, you probably say B, right? But also I want to emphasize these also uh, good models um, because of the, if you look at the D, it's pretty accurate. Okay, it's very accurate. And the B is not that accurate, but it's very um, simple and also compared to other A and C models, it passes through the center of the data. Right? So B, model B, should be Y equals AX plus B. Sometimes we have to choose a right model to uh, represent the data. If you want to build a very accurate model, then we have to choose D. If we want the simplest model, then we have to choose B. That's it. And uh, I want you to understand the concept uh, differences between interpolation and extrapolations. The inter interpolation means here we have a nine, the orange color point, uh, point set. Okay, we have a nine point set here, and this blue line actually passes through all these nine point sets. Okay, but interpolation is actually predictions. So here you can see there are two points, there are a line. But it's not actually line. It's uh, uh, so many tiny number of points predicted between these two data points, and also this point and this point. There are so many and um, very tiny number of data points are predicted. That's how, that's why we saw it looks like a line. Okay, but actually there are so many points have been generated between these two points. That is estimate that is interpolation okay the interpolation is a method of constructing new data points within the range of discrete set of known data points sometimes we can use curve fitting the previous one was a linear fitting and we can also do some modeling using curve uh, this is a um, uh, cubic spline functions to fit this nine point set. Then what is extrapolation? Let's say we want to predict um, when x equals 85 kilograms, then what is y? Okay, the extrapolation is the process of estimating beyond the original observation range. Okay. So we can predict a value based on our data set. That is extrapolation. So let me ask you a question. This figure, is it interpolation or extrapolation? So you can see there are many data points and all data points are connected together. So this is interpolation and they should be uh, they use the cubic spline function to fit the data. And then how about this? We have this red data point and we want to predict this one. That is extrapolation. I will definitely ask these questions in the midterm exam number two. Okay. Uh, back to the uh, model B, then how we can find the slope and the intercept of these models. We want to use estim uh, minimize the error between the actual value and the predicted value. So here, let's say um, we put some um, X7 data, put this model, then the red one is predicted by this uh, mathematical model. We don't know uh, what is the mathematical model, but let's assume this is the predicted value and this yellow one, orange one, is actual value on x7. So this is x7, y7, and this is x7, y hat 7. y hat means it's, this is a predicted value. Then without hat, this is uh, actual observations. Okay. 
So we want to see the difference. The difference is error, prediction error. Okay? Sometimes people say it's a residual or it's error. Okay? The concept here we want to build a model B that passes through the center of the nine data points. How, how can we do that? We have to minimize the summation of total error. So this is error number seven, and there should be error number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there should be nine errors because we have nine data sets. We have to minimize the error. This concept we call it least scale estimation. This is a um, very um, important concept uh, in statistical uh, regression analysis, uh, but this is a somehow uh, it's beyond uh, over our uh, study area. So you, if you go to uh, if you become a junior or sophomore, and you if you enter the statistics course, then you will learn more deeply about how to uh, how to uh, build a form to find A and B. Um, so this is the um, um, how we find A. Okay, this is looks very um, complex, but actually it's not that complex. Uh, this is shows x i means uh, i is a index. So we have a nine data points. So x one, i equals one to uh, let's say n is nine. Okay, i equals one to nine. Then uh, x1, x2, x3 has increased. Then minus x bar is x bar is um, average over nine data points. So here we have nine data points over weight. So x bar is average. I think it's somehow in here 65 or 70 something like that. And y i is also same concept. Y i goes one to the nine. Okay, so one y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, it goes increased uh, minus y bar. Okay, so y bar is seems like somewhere here, 170. And then divided by the sigma i goes one to the n equal nine and the xi minus x bar, in this case square. Okay, that is x a. Once we found a, then we can uh, calculate y bar minus a x bar equals b. Okay. So here we have a uh, number of data. This is nine data points. So you can see i goes one to the nine, and uh, when x one is seventy nine point seven, and uh, x y one is one hundred sixty six point six. Okay. And the x2 is uh, 49.7 and the y2 is 152.8. Okay, we have nine data points set. We can calculate the average value of weight and the stature. And then we apply this uh, formula. We can find A is 0 0.9 and the B is 106. So let's say we have uh, this uh, uh, statistical models this red line then we can add some value here let's say my weight is 73 kilogram dr park's weight is 73 kilogram we add this number into um, variable x then we can estimate stature y hat the predicted stature by the mother is 172 centimeters. It's pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate. Um, I'm very surprising that uh, it's it's almost the same. My uh, stature is 172. Okay. But uh, you need to be very careful when you using your mothers. So for example, this is the female data and we have a nine data sets and then we can find this statistical models y hat equals 0.9x plus 106. So Dr. Park's weight uh, if the x variable is 73 kilogram, 
then y hat is 172 cm based on this model. But what about if we add more data n equals 30, then the slope is decreased dramatically. And then if we put the 73, my height, 168 cm. What about if we add uh, more data, 2,210 data? The slope more decreased, it's not too much decreased. Um, the slope, uh, the intercept is 138. So the estimate 167. So why it decreased? Because we used the female data sets. Dr. Park is male, but we used female data to predict male's stature using his weight. Okay, so it's uh, it's okay, but uh, it's not very okay. So it's a female da data oriented models. Probably, if you apply female, then it's more accurate. So. We, if we want to increase the generalizability, we have to include male data together so that we can also use model uh, to predict the female data, not only female data, but also male data. Okay? So here we have a homework number five. Uh, the title is linear model. So think about we have a nine data points point to set, the weight, kilogram, and the stature. Uh, I want you to fill this table. There are question marks here, and the, uh, what is the prediction for uh, index i equals 1, uh, second, third, fourth. So first you need to build a mathematical model, simple linear models, uh, to predict y i hat when x equals 49, 60, and 54. And then you know the predicted value, and this is the actual value. The actual value minus predicted value is error, right? So error. You can find it. And the last one is, um, no, that's it. The so first one is find the mother. Second one is find the value y i hat, um, and the third one is calculate the error. Okay, uh, please submit this work um, by next Monday uh, before the before starting the class. Okay. So you may need to use these equations to find a and b. Okay, today uh, we learned what is the mathematical modeling and the second one we understand the concept of differences between interpolation and extrapolation and we know how we build the linear models using data points thank you for watching this short video have a great day